Brother Gerard was never hard to find. If he wasn't out begging for alms, he was at the monastery, praying and attending to his usual duties. He liked to set out the feed for the cows. He almost always pulled the little green weeds in the garden, and with permission, he could sometimes be seen clipping pretty pink roses from the flower garden to place at the feet of the Blessed Virgin. To the children in town, his work seemed very boring. Brother Trod was always busy. He was always picking vegetables or carrying big, heavy water buckets, digging holes for new plants, cleaning, tending to the animals, praying or begging. Did Brother Gerard ever have fun? The children asked the question amongst themselves as they made their walk along the winding dirt path that led to the big stone monastery. They would attend Mass, they decided, and then they'd ask the Father Superior, no, beg the Father Superior, to speak to Brother Gerard. One of the children carried a tiny wooden basket filled to the brim with bread and fishes, fruits, buttons, and other trinkets that the children had donated. They wanted to present Father Superior with their little gifts. After all, Brother Gerard said that such things made Jesus very happy. An older boy stepped forward and knocked on the door. After a second, a brother, all clad in brown, pulled the door open and looked over the merry little bunch with a smile, perhaps trying to hide some amusement. Now, now, what have we here? It seems that you are all on a very important mission. The young brother exclaimed, pulling the door open wider. Come in, come in. You know where the chapel is. Thank you, Brother Sebastian. Good morning, Brother Sebastian. It's very good to see you, Brother Sebastian. The children were very sure to be on their best behavior. Otherwise, they would not be let in any further. The sound of little pattering footsteps echoed through the hallways, while the children raced through the chapel, most of them very intently watching the metal grill to see the red curtain be drawn back where the brothers would be sitting. Like a swarm of busy bees, they descended upon Brother Gerard after Mass, of course with very amused permission, and surrounded him like a tiny army. He had a great dirty apron tied about him, and there were little beads of sweat dotting his brow. With a barking laugh, he held up his hands and relented. You have caught me, my little friends. There's nowhere for me to go. Surely an emergency must have happened for you to have so eagerly come. Wiping one of his dirty hands on his apron, he motioned toward a very tall shade tree, and like sheep following a shepherd, the group followed him and sat down in the grass. For a long moment there was silence, nothing but the rustling of leaves in the trees, the music of the birds, and the sound of buzzing bugs. It was a most beautiful spring day, warm and sunny, and Brother Gerard sighed. "'I'm glad you chose today to see me, my little friends. Is it not a most magnificent day? God has allowed the sun to smile on us, and the breeze to cool us, and all of the little animals are rejoicing in His glory. See that bird there, singing her song? All glory to God!' He reached up, and untied his apron from around his neck and his back, setting it aside. With his gentle exclamation passed, he set his dark eyes to looking over the little familiar faces. It was not the first time the children had come to visit him, and it was always a pleasant surprise. Surely they had all come for some grave problem. Now, whatever is the matter? Brother, one of the girls spoke up, filling with the checkered fabric of her pink dress. We had a question to ask you. One of the older boys said, We see you in town all the time, but you are always working, and when we come here, you are always working. Aren't you miserable, brother? Do you ever have fun? Brother Gerard let out another jolly laugh at the question one of his thin hands flying up to rest over his heart. Oh, oh my, yes, yes, 
I have a great deal of work and not as much play. But we brothers are no sticks in the mud, you know. We play ball and cards, and we draw and paint and sing, and we have a great deal of fun. But you see, brother, a different girl sensibly pointed out, we can have fun whenever we want to, but you work more than you do all of those things you say are fun. Do you see what we mean? I do, I do, the kindly brother nodded. But you must understand, I am not here to have fun. I am here to pray and to save souls, and my own soul, of course. Now, I have fun in moderation, but if my whole life was fun, then I wouldn't ever do any work. Instead of asking whether something is going to be fun or not, try to ask yourselves this instead. Will I please God by doing this? Or will doing this thing benefit my soul? And then you will see, it is not so bad to do difficult things like work or clean or cook or sometimes even pray. But my friends, you need to remember that if we only have fun and do not focus on saving our souls, then we cannot get to heaven. And while you grow up, you will come to understand that not everything can be a fun thing. St. Teresa says, Our Lord moves amidst the pots and pans. If obedience sends you to the kitchen, remember that the Lord walks among the pots and pans and that he will keep you in inward tasks, and in outward ones, too. So while it seems like I am not doing fun things, I am doing things that are good for me, that keep me busy, and that do not allow me to be lazy. Better yet, I can please God by working. For a long moment, silence reigned. It fell like a blanket over the group and one could almost hear the brains of the little children buzzing as they tried to make sense of the brother's words. A little boy shuffled over and wrapped his arms around one of Brother Gerard's. So you mean we should have fun, but we should also work hard, because it makes God happy? Well, the brother paused. Yes, but you keep in mind that innocent play also pleases God. He doesn't want you to be sad. If you pay attention in class, you'd know that there is no such thing as a sad saint. So you can have fun, plenty of it. But you cannot have fun forever, and then do no work at all. Does that make sense? He looked across the little sea of faces, and was met with confusion. So he cleared his throat and tried again. Think of this. Your mother wakes you up in the morning, and you have to go right to school after saying your prayers with her. Some days, while you're walking to school, maybe you pray. Some days, maybe you race with your friends. And then you pay attention in class. You do all of your work, and then you go home. Perhaps you want to play, but mother needs you to help her with chores. Maybe you need to pick vegetables in the garden. You need to pick up your room or... Clean the floor, or feed the cat. But what you wanted to do was go and play ball. If you sacrifice your play to God and help your mother, God will be very pleased. Then you are rewarded by being able to go and have fun with the other children, until your mother calls you for you to come home. And you should always go home when your mother calls for you. I see, one of the girls shouted. I see, brother. We must do our important jobs and then have fun. But it is not bad to have fun, and that is why you work, and then you play with the brothers. Yes, very good, Gianna. That is correct. He was being met with an excited chorus as the other children came to understand what it was that he had meant. Then, reaching for his apron, he stood up and tossed it over his head. And speaking of going to your mother when she calls you, Brother Vincent is calling for me. Thank you for visiting, my friends. God bless you. 
At that, Brother Gerard gently retrieved his arm from the boy who was holding on to him, and cast a warm smile about himself before leaving the little group sitting beneath the tree. He fought a laugh as Brother Vincent raised an eyebrow. They're in quite a rush, aren't they? Ah, Brother Gerard glanced over his shoulder. They were all scurrying toward the gate like mice running after a piece of cheese. I think they may be off to do their chores.'